Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here with a familiar face, uh, Peter Greenberg, uh, who's the CBS uh, News Travel Editor. But we're here for a very different reason today. Uh, it's the premiere of the, the Royal Tour, Tanzania. Uh, and we're going to be here to see the opening. And uh, we're going to talk to Peter now about that program. It's coming up on PBS and in other places. Uh, and you'll find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Peter, first of all, um, great to be here to see your premiere for the Royal Tour. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, in this case, how it all came about and how you, how you ended up going to Tanzania. Well, we've wanted to do Tanzania as a Royal Tour for the last 12 years. Mm -hmm. We started doing Royal Tours 22 years ago. Right. With the King I was trying to remember, I was going to tell, how many Royal Tours have you done now? About 10. ten. Um, and that was with the King of Jordan. I remember that. I was there. Yeah. And we've done everything from the President of Rwanda to the Prime Minister of Poland, uh, Prime Minister of New Zealand, Netanyahu in Israel, and many that. others. Uh, but we've always wanted to do Tanzania. And there were successful, uh, successive presidents who didn't want to do it. Mm. And then in this situation, uh, the, the last president actually died in office, and his vice That's president... That's a bummer for the program, I think. That's kind of hard. Well, <laughs> yes and no, because the, the vice president then became president, and she wanted to do it. And so, with that kind of support, we're able to do it. Let's talk about your host, and it, the president's name is? Samia Saluhu Hassan, an amazing woman, the first woman of color and a Muslim to run a country. And this is a country of consequence. If you look at the map, Tanzania borders on eight countries, six of which are landlocked. Tanzania has two ports, and everything to those countries is, is coming through th Tanzania, which means they are a country of consequence. Not to mention the Serengeti, the Crater, Kilimanjaro, Zanzibar, my favorite. So lots of stuff. Yeah. Well, talk to me a little bit about where she took you. Where, 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 where did she, and she, she was ex, sort of escorting you around and showing you all well, around her country. The whole idea of the, of the premise of the Royal Tour is that I go to sitting head of states, heads of state, and they become my tour guide That's right. for eight days. So I was the everyman and she was the tour guide. And uh, now there's no right of editorial control or review. Whatever happened on eight days is what you're gonna see in the show. And we started actually in a place called Kazi, which is the small fishing village in Zanzibar where she's from. And that was uh, revealing in terms of the lifestyle there, the history. She took me to her first mosque, which was built in the 12th century, still standing. Uh, the fishing, the music, the culture, the food. We went fishing. And I, catch anything. I did. Okay. Her fish was bigger, but then she's the president. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we're out in the Serengeti, the, the, the Gorogoro Crater, Mount Kilimanjaro, Arusha, uh, out to the Maasai. We covered a lot of ground. No, it sounds like it. And so how long was it? You said eight days, right? Eight days. It's a one-hour special on PBS. Uh, it will also be available on Amazon Prime and Apple TV+. Plus. Well, talk a little bit. Was there anything about this tour that really surprised you? I assume you had been to Tanzania before. Yes, but not to Zanzibar. Zanzibar has got this such a romantic, myth, mythological name, you know, mystical. And it was, to me, it was like a Bob Hope Bing Crosby Roadshow. Turns out they did a movie called The Road to there, I, I know that well. It's a great, it's a great movie. Yeah. Crosby, Bob Hope, and Dorothy Lemour. So I, was, I couldn't wait to go. But when you take a look at the history of this country, at one point, everybody wanted it. The Germans, the British, the Arabs, the Portuguese, the Omanis. Uh, and in fact, it, it took until 1964 for them to get their independence. It, there was Tanganyika and, and uh, Zanzibar, which is then under the, under the rule of the Sultan of Oman. So now they formed these two countries into one, Zanzibar and Tanganyika, to, perform, to create Tanzania. Absolutely. Now, uh, what do you, uh, do you hope this episode will help tourism to tan Tanzania? How, how do you think it will? Well, you know, my job here is not to promote tourism or sell it. My job is to, to expose a country in a very unusual way, in this case, through the eyes of its leader. Mm -hmm. Someone who was born there, raised there, went to school there, and knows it probably better than anyone. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've done with all these shows. Now, will tourism increase? It has to. Why? Because they got so beaten up by COVID, their tourism numbers went down from like 1.8 million down to 500,000. Mm -hmm. And for a country that has a 17% GDP just travel and tourism, that's significant. Mm -hmm. So they're hoping it's going to come back. Well, I also think it's one of the sort of secret safari destinations, too. I do know some amazing places for safari. You think of safari in yeah. South Africa. You think of it in Kenya, yeah. places like that. But there is a lot of stuff, that kind of stuff in Tanzania as well. For me, Tanzania has it all. Uh, you know, you can wait 
two to three weeks to see the Big Five in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I saw the Big Five in one day in Tanzania. There you go. And that sells it right there. But, but remember, this is a country that didn't get overbuilt. It's not a victim of over-tourism. You have wide open spaces and you have great people. That's a combination that doesn't lose, it wins. Now, are there any experiences that, you said Zanzibar stood out, any other experiences that really stood out for you? Well, talking about the history and her own history, how she evolved into the presidency, what she's done as the only woman of color and a Muslim to run a country, in which you have a country of 123 separate tribes. They're not necessarily accepting of a woman leader. Mm -hmm. And she's had to turn that around, and it's amazing to see what she's done. Well, that's fantastic. It was nice to hear that, and we'll get a good look at her on the program now. Um, how can you think, obviously, we're going out to about 100,000 travel advisors out there. How do you think they can use this program to help uh, better sell? You, you're not selling it, but they can use this program to better sell Tanzania. It's really simple. You know, the worst four-letter word that starts with F when it comes to travel is fear. A lot of people don't want to go anywhere outside the United States right now because of the Ukraine situation and other locations around the world. Everybody who's watching me now, do yourself a favor, do your clients a favor, buy an atlas. Buy an atlas. I'm not talking about the, you know, the 25-pound coffee table version. Do a pocket atlas. Put it on your bedside table. And every night before you go to bed, open it up to a random page. And then you're going to find out where you can go. Right. And all the places in terms of time and distance and space. It's an amazing, look, there are 54 countries in Africa. People don't realize that. And there are only about two of them I wouldn't go to right now. Right. And think about that. I mean, so the options right now, especially if people in the, in the post-COVID world are looking for wide open spaces and breathing room and built-in social distancing, you couldn't beat Tanzania. And I do think travel advisors are already going to Tanzania last year uh, for so far as I know some that were doing that then. Me too. And, and they, they came back raving about it because... They weren't, it wasn't Venice, it wasn't Barcelona. You know, they weren't a victim of any kind of over-tourism. And basically, if you look at the topography, they can't be. Fantastic. Now, where can we watch this program and when? It premieres on PBS uh, in the Chicago area uh, on April 18th, which is tonight. But it then rolls out throughout the entire PBS network. Each station starts to run it over the next two to three months. Mm -hmm. And by the end of this week, and this week being April 18th, it'll be available on, on Amazon Prime and Apple TV+. Plus. Yeah, and that's good. So you can see it then whenever it's on demand then. Exactly. Well, Peter, congratulations on another royal tour in the books, actually. And it's, this is, you said, how many now, 10? This is number 10. Number 10. Yeah. All right. Well, lucky number 10. And it sounds like this is a great story about this new president uh, that really, you know, and it, who's going to sell her country. And believe me, it seems like there's a lot of things to do uh, in Tanzania. Well, the most interesting thing here is you said the word sell. She doesn't have to sell her country. She just presents it. Mm -hmm. And you'll see why. Again, Peter, great to see you. We'll see you on the road very soon somewhere. Well, we just we did. Oh, no, no. We, we do. We see each other all the time on the road. We just came back from, uh, I think, Portugal, I think. We did. Right we did. Uh, again, congratulations on this program. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to see the premiere right after this, and you're going to see a little bit of excerpts from the trailer uh, in this video. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. Get set for a very special adventure. I'm Peter Greenberg. And this is Tanzania, the royal tour. <laughs> this is not your usual tour. This way? She's not your usual tour guide. Her name, Samia Saluhu Hassan, and she is the president of Tanzania. So get ready, because we're taking you deep into a country that most of you have never seen. On Tanzania, the royal tour.